A chronic full thickness rotator cuff tear needs to be repaired surgically, right? Well, turns out the answer might not actually be that simple. Let's talk about the research that compares surgical to non-surgical treatment. In this systematic review, they looked at surgical versus non-surgical treatment of full thickness rotator cuff tears. In total, there are three studies with 269 participants with a one-year follow-up. So by no means is this a large systematic review, but in 2018, that was as many research articles that compared surgical versus non-surgical care. And what they found was that surgical treatment had slightly better outcomes when compared to the non-surgical groups. However, these findings weren't clinically significant. And what they found was that over the 12 months, that function improved by five points and pain decreased by one. And so while there were improvements for pain and function, they were by a very small margin when compared to the non-surgical groups. And then there was this 2021 systematic review, which included 435 participants. And what they found is that surgery still had a slight advantage when compared to non-surgical treatment. However, again, they found that it wasn't clinically significant at either a one or two year follow-up. In both of these articles, they mentioned that the size of the tear might influence the outcome. With smaller tears in the supraspinatus, which is the top and most commonly involved rotator cuff tear, having more favorable results with non-surgical treatment. Additionally, both of these research articles mentioned that there's a concern that non-surgically treated rotator cuff tears might progress in size over time. Which is interesting because when we look at surgically repaired rotator cuff tears, well, there does seem to be a re-tear rate somewhere between 20 to 90 percent. And in those cases, they still report a positive outcome. So there's still a lot that we don't know about how rotator cuff tears are going to respond surgically versus non-surgically repaired. And with that being said, both of these studies found that non-surgical treatment for full thickness rotator cuff tears is an option. So what exercises can we do? Well, the general approach for these types of cases is to gradually increase both the load and the range of motion that the shoulder can tolerate. Initially, we can start off with some isometric exercises to start loading the shoulder in a variety of different positions. For the supraspinatus, we can start off with some sort of shoulder abduction exercise, either up against a wall or using a light exercise band. And we can start by decreasing the lever by putting the band around the elbow, depending on what the tolerance to load is, and then just slowly lifting up so that we get a little bit of muscle activation and hold this for 30 to 45 seconds. In addition to increasing the load with this exercise, we can also increase the lever, which will increase the load. So instead of having the band around my elbow, I can have it out of my hand and then slowly lift up to whatever position I feel like I could tolerate, and then again hold for 30 to 45 seconds. We can also do isometric loading for the external rotators, so the infraspinatus and teres minor on the back side of the shoulder. And to perform this, we'll take the same exercise band and have our arm at our side. Sometimes they'll recommend placing a towel in between the elbow and the body just to increase a little bit of activation of the muscles, but that's not entirely needed. And so to do this, we could take the exercise band here and gently pull apart and hold. So we're just trying to rotate our arms out and then again, hold for 30 to 45 seconds. We can also load these isometric exercises in a couple of different planes. So instead of having our arms just at our side, we can bring our arm into more abduction and then externally rotate. So we would anchor the band out in front of us, bring the arm into a little bit more abduction, externally rotate so we're putting pressure against the band here, and then we can repeat up a little bit higher so we're getting closer and closer to an overhead position. The next progression is to start incorporating some movement with these strengthening exercises. For the supraspinatus, we would do a lateral raise with a slight modification that instead of having the arm straight out to the side, we'll actually bring it forward just a little bit. It'll put the shoulder in line with the shoulder blade, which will increase the muscle activation that we'll get from that supraspinatus. So again, when we're doing a lateral raise here, we can start by actually putting the band around our elbow. That'll help just decrease the lever that we're putting on the shoulder. And then we wanna slowly raise our arm up to maybe about shoulder height, depending on what our tolerance is and then slowly back down. So ideally we're doing this over three to four seconds. So it's one, two, three, up, one, two, three, back down. And then of course we can increase the lever by holding the band or the weight in our hand. And then again, slowly lifting up over three to four seconds and then slowly back down. In the beginning, we might not have full range of motion. So we might have to go through a smaller range, which is okay. And then we'll just gradually increase that range so we get higher up into that movement. For external rotation, we would do the same thing. So we could take an exercise band and have our arms at our side, and then we'll slowly externally rotate out as far as we can go, squeezing the shoulder blades together, and then slowly back to that original starting position. 
Again, we can change the position of the shoulder to work into more abduction as we can tolerate it. So bringing that arm up to about shoulder height and then externally rotating from here so that we're just working those shoulder muscles in a couple of different planes. Another exercise that I like to include is a wall walk or a wall slide. And the reason why is because it incorporates an overhead movement with a little bit of feedback for the rotator cuff muscles. So to perform, you'll take an exercise band and place it around the wrist. We wanna keep a little bit of tension on the band. And so in the beginning here, what we can do is we could just slowly slide our hands up the wall, keeping tension on the band, and then slowly coming back down. And then if we can, we can actually lift up and then back to the wall, and then back down. And then for the wall walk, which is a little bit more challenging, we'll actually lift our hand up off the wall and slowly lift all the way up to the top. And then we can walk back down to that original starting position. As range of motion and strength improve, then we can start to tailor the exercises to mimic whatever we're gonna do when we turn back to sport. For example, with an overhead athlete, we'd wanna to start to load them with overhead movement. So we can use an overhead press with either an exercise band or some sort of weight, a kettlebell or a dumbbell, to start improving that tolerance with overhead movements. So we can either do just an isometric hold where we're just getting used to those positions, or we can start to slowly press up overhead and then back down. If somebody is a throwing athlete, strength is obviously still important, but we also need to incorporate some speed as well. So we can do some exercise and some movements that's going to move that shoulder through a faster range of motion. So that way they're able to tolerate those throwing movements. So hopefully this video on rotator cuff tears was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more of my content, hit the subscribe button. It'll be somewhere over here. I'll see you in the next video.